Good evening. We have a quorum. It's 6.30. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. And first up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. We have Alexi Levine. Hello, thank you. You don't look like Lexi. I'm Alexi. <laughs> Go ahead. What have you got? Uh, oh, so uh, I'm one of the owners of the massage school. We moved into that building last year at 231 Russell Street. And uh, we want to put a sign up. It's uh, a small, simple sign. I sent a PDF of it. Uh, I don't know if you have it. I have, uh, I can provide it again. Uh, I, so I don't have to go fumbling for it. I'll be happy to set you up for screen sharing. And you can show us your, your drawing. Sounds good. What is the address, Alexi? Uh, 231 Russell Street. Thank you. And uh, it's approximately four by six feet. It replaces the old 50-50 fitness sign. Uh, I have it up on my screen. Do I have to do something to share it? or? Uh, yeah. It should be you a have green. To hit share screen at the bottom of the Zoom. Okay. If you drag your mouse over the bottom of the screen, you should see a menu pop up. And then after you hit share screen, it'll ask you which window to share. There you, you go. go. Okay. So it's just our name in blue and yellow. Uh, and um, uh, it's about approximately four by six. So it's all about half of the allowable size. It's the same exact size and sign structure uh, as 5050 Fitness had. The same company, Sunrays Printing, is making it to their same mes measurements. Uh, and it's not lit from within, although I'll put a little light on the outside of it. The light on the outside is like a gooseneck overhead or? Yeah, I actually purchased a, a solar light that's uh, like a gooseneck overhead on both sides. We'll see how that works. There, There is a hardwired uh, light on the bottom, but I'd like not to use it if I can get away with the solar one being good enough. Okay. Let's see how that works out. That's fine. Can you, sh can you shut solar ones off uh they they have a light sensor so they come on when it gets dark and they usually run out of power a few hours before the morning so in other words the sign will be on all night as long as the battery holds on it's a much less dim uh much less bright light than a hardwired light though it's 300 lumens which is like a i think that's like a 40 40 watt light bulb at most, maybe it's more like a 25 watt light bulb. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Do we have any residential butters? Mark, you got an awful echo for some reason. I what? You got an awful echo. When you're speaking, it echoes. I don't know what to do there, about that. There are very limited residential properties in that area. There may be one or two, but um, not right, um, not right there. Maybe there's an occupied house across the street, I think, but uh, I might be down a little bit. Yeah, there's, there's not much there. It'll be less bright than the street lights for sure. We are um, uh, between basically Wildwood Barbecue and uh, that little ice cream shop. Uh, I think it's called Heaven or something. Across the street from the Hadley uh, Family Practice Medical Building. Okay. Any other comments, questions? If not, I'll make a motion to approve the sign as as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Good luck. Thanks. Bye.
have uh, Jim Carlin. Next. Mr. Jim Carlin. Mr. Carlin. No, he's not responding. Mr. Carlin. Here we go. Can you hear me? Now we can. Yes. Sorry about that. Yeah. So I'm uh I'm back for three fifty five Russell Street, the AT and T wireless store. Three fifty eight. Three fifty five. Okay, I did send that around, but let me see if I can pull it up. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to have to manipulate this a little bit. It's uh, sideways, so let me get it opened and uh, Okay. The email calls it 351. Okay, I think we're in business now. Let me get back to here. There we go. So we uh, made it a halo lit and we brought it down to 37.5 square feet underneath the uh, 40 square foot allowed. Uh, remind me again, what's the uh, dimension? You said 37 point something, right? Yes, uh, 37.5 square feet. So it's 42 inches tall by 10 foot eight and five eighths wide. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's in compliant. Any other questions or comments from the board? I'll make right. a motion to approve. Is that the only sign? Is there a sign going at the pylon for the ball? Uh, I don't think they have a pylon here, no. Okay. Second. Motion and second. All in, any other comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. Good luck. Okay, next up would be Attorney Reedy. 
Thanks, Mr. Dwyer. Um, hi, everybody. So I'm here twofold. One is 303 Russell Street, that rear building. Uh, last meeting, you approved that ANR and also to remove the requirement that it be a uh, Rayos. And we had talked a little bit about what the use was going to be. I had sent that email for the Subaru dealership, uh, motor vehicle service, general park storage. Uh, they're also going to do car wash and in, in detailing. Um, and they're going to have uh, motor oil storage above ground, no more than 500 gallon above ground storage tanks oil water separator, floor drain, um, but none, nothing on the uh, the parking area, the building footprint, that's all staying the same. If if they want to change it, they'll have to come back before you, obviously. So we're requesting further site plan approval waiver, please. That was a good point you brought up, Tom, and the fact that uh, there was some controversy in the past regarding parking. They would no, no. A lot of cars close together, and it was like a storage facility. So uh, if they're going to do something like that, they'll have to come back. Right. Yep. And we've learned in previous uh, projects that they are actually are a very small quantity generator over the aquifer if they recycle their oil. Right. Yes. Nowadays, about all the choice they have is used oil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval for Steve Lewis Subaru for 303 Russell Rear. Second. Motion and second. Any other discussion? If I if I could maybe just make it for the Subaru dealership. And Subaru dealership, okay. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Not accepted. No. Let it be Subaru. <laughs> <laughs> all, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the other thing I had, I know Attorney Albano's here as well. I don't know if you want to talk about the renewals. Uh, I'm here on behalf of Hadleaf for their renewal. And I think uh, Attorney Albano's here on behalf of the Heirloom Collective. You know, under your bylaw, you've got um, uh, renewal requirements. And I, in correspondence with uh, Attorney Dwyer, he thought that we would, at this meeting, talk about when we could and how and what we should do to submit for those renewals. Do we need to go through a formal public hearing on this? I don't remember. We did not have one on the first renewal for the heirloom. Okay. That was just I think the, the bylaw says, meetings and we approved it? Yeah, I think, well, I think the bylaw says that you publish, and if there are no objections, you'll approve it. Correct. Okay. Okay. I'm just looking for that, so... I can tell you where it is, Bill. It's uh, section 30.4.5.7. Yep. Okay. So hang on. Let me. Bring that up too, so we can all see it. So that's what we have. Uh, so we're doing one for one year and one for two years. No, the one year is the initial uh, issuance of the license. And then there are two two-year um, uh, extensions or renewals. Okay. okay. So we're doing Hadley for, for a- the first one. For the, we, two, for the 
one year and you're one for this two year. Yeah, Al, Hadleaf's only been open since October of 2022. So this will be their first renewal. Okay. So I guess what we do is publish a notice of the request for renewal and... Um, uh, with the words in there that the renewal request will be granted automatically unless a written objection is received within 20 days of the first publication of notice. So, um, Uh, what do you think, Jim? Just get a get a legal notice out. Yep, I will get a legal. I'll get a. I'll get a quote. I will send each of you gentlemen the price. You can split the cost between the two of you, <laughs> and uh, that'll be it. Great. That sounds great. Okay. You'll arrange for the publication, correct? I'll take care of the publication okay. in the newspaper, yes. We're just going to get a bill. Okay, fine. Yeah. Great. And the way we do our, our, our fees now is the price of publication in the newspaper plus the price of postage at 10%. We were using 350 bucks. And when the Gazette went up on their legal notices, we weren't paying for beans on legal notices because they went so high. Legal notices has lately been running, and, I'm, and you, you've seen it, have been yeah. running about 450 bucks. For two it is what it is. Right. So it doesn't seem like we need to send uh, written notices, just need to do the uh, publication. Right, just, just two notices in a newspaper. You know, it doesn't say anything about notifying a butters. So. Okay. Thank um, you. Probably try to make that for. Uh, March 7th, good for everybody. March 7th, you say? March 7th. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next, Mr. Dwyer. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Like next is uh, Jim Shea. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, so I happened to sign on before Greg, but uh, this is uh, Greg's um, ask of you guys. So if I could pass my time to him. Oh, sure. You were hey, guys. You were um, great tied anyway. <laughs> uh, we wanted to talk about getting approval to do the softball field on that big empty oh, lot that's good, good uh how about a little background who you are who you represent okay yeah, and sorry. what you want to do okay yeah um greg lesage on the uh, park and rec director for, for town of hadley um there's a need obviously in our community for there, is there any chance space. of seeing you when you talk i I can understand better when I see somebody's lips moving. All right. Hey, guys. Thank you. Um, we'd like to, to get a softball field in that area um, by the just south of the substation to, on River Drive. Um, obviously, there's a need for, for playing space for, for softball. Uh, right now, our girls play with really the only use they have is the, the fields over at Hopkins and they kind of get pushed around a little bit. So, so there's a, there's a need for a softball field. Uh, 
we did secure some money from the state to for the project. Um, we just want to, we need to find the best area to put the field on. Um, I know there's, I've, I've heard different interest in that land and I just don't know how feasible uh, it is for us to use that. Have you consulted with uh, Hopkins regarding phase two of their expansion for ball fields? Because they're going to put another softball field there. And also too, have you consulted with the select board about the future site for a DPW? So if all of a sudden you put a softball field there, where the DPW is in negotiation to have some expansion. So I think there should be a little bit more conversation before you usurp that land and then it would be very difficult if the uh, DPW had to use some of that land because they're very tight where they are. So where exactly is this land? Pardon? It's adjacent to the North Hadley Fire Substation, which would have been just about the time you got on the board. So it's just maybe just before. So it's just south of the right. Okay. Yes, and it to would, the rear. Oh, it would pretty much preclude if it's just south of it. It would preclude any extension of using all that facility in the back. So there should be some conversation with A, Hopkins, and B, the select board, who really is in charge of the facility. So if all of a sudden you put a softball field to the south of the substation, there's gonna be no way you can probably access it adequately for a DPW. And, uh, but that's not certain that the DPW is going there, but there is a committee that is uh, reviewing the option, and that is one possible option, from what I understand. So just because there's some open space, we're not against the idea of a softball field, but there is going to be a softball field, another one, at the Hopkins Academy site. So you're going to have three softball fields there. So remind me, I seem to recall that having softball fields at North Hadley was part of the original site plan submission. Anyone else remember it that way? Yeah, I guess seemed to. Greg, can more, I jump more, in here? More, yeah. more, possi more possibility, not part of the site plan. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if we ever voted on it as being a no. yeah, yeah. possibility. Yeah. The original, so, I can answer some was, of these. It could be a bundle of things. There was nothing decided that it was, was going to be a, a fire station and a softball field. That, that was one of the options that could be there. Another one was the DPW yard. Um, yeah, hard. There, there, was, there was a lot of possibles besides the fire station, and nothing was ever decided or voted upon. Being that I am on the DPW feasibility committee, that is one of the sites that we're looking at is possibly using for a D, D, DPW yard. So to say that we could, I, I would not be in favor of approving it for a softball field until the DP, until a committee decides that we don't want that as a DPW yard. And that has not been decided yet. Jim, can I cut in here for a second? Sure. Okay, so we went about a year and a half ago and had a meeting in front of the select board to ask them if this was a possibility, and they voted on it, and they gave us the land to build the um, softball field. I then went and secured funding from the state, from uh, Representative Kerry, to build the field, and the only reason we were here was because Carolyn uh, told us that we needed to check with you guys, and uh, explain what our plans were. And so the reason that we weren't doing it at um, Hopkins was because Hopkins obviously has um, the ability to use those right after school and in the evening. And so when these young girls, which it would be 12 and under, um, would be able to use these fields was when they're done. So that would be who knows, anywhere from five to seven o'clock at night. And we're not going to have lights out there. 
and these girls aren't going to have a place. So right now they have to ask the Cal Ripken team um, for time. There's literally no place for these young girls. And those fields, believe it or not, are actually, you know, too big. Because as you get o- bigger, the fields get bigger. Or as you get older, the fields get bigger. And so this is going to be a dedicated 12U field um, for these young ladies to be able to play on. And I actually called a member of the uh, select board because I had heard that that was a place they were looking for. And I said, well, what does that mean for us? She said, it doesn't mean anything because we already approved you guys well, to this, use this. You, you're talking a year and a half ago. There's a new group of select people aboard and what's happened to hooker school that was uh one of the uh provisions that was available uh i was on the cpa committee when we were discussing the hopkins academy field and there was always some controversy well hopkins is using it it's a field that is can be used by both the community and hopkins academy hopkins academy does not control it completely but there ought to be some way that you can work it out. And that was the ultimate reason for allowing the CPA funding for the phase one at Hopkins. And phase two is about ready to come up. And so if you want to put your, your bid in for a field there, that's possible. But the, the consensus at that time was the kids that are in school, they'll be playing a, they're not going to be playing two sports. In other words, they're not going to be playing for a junior high team or a high school team and under the 12, 12 and under. And that's what was uh, the, uh, the hooker school was going to be used for. I mean, you know, the elementary school. Oh, it seems well, to me they got to go back to, you got to go back to the select board and see if they are agreement in agreement with the other decision. Where the things have changed. I mean, people can change their minds. People can change their I mean, minds. Oh, wait. So you're telling me that now that we've secured funding, that we're they can then go back and change their mind after well, they voted on it? Oh, okay, yeah. guys, a, time out. Time out. We're not, we're not telling you. Back up. Stop. Slow down. We are not telling you anything. It's not well, our decision to make. Right. Well, that's what Mike was just saying. Uh, it seems like... Think- there seems because to be got a directive from the select board as to how to proceed here. If yep. they want to pull this, if they want to pull this site off the table for the DPW, then fine, we can go ahead. If not, we got a problem. But it's their problem, not ours. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The, the, if if you, ha- I mean, we we can't give you. The, all I can tell you is the DPW feasibility committee is looking at that site as a possible location. Any probabilities? The selectmen mm-hmm. are the ultimate owners and deciders on the property as to whether it's a DPW or a softball field, other than town meeting. Um, if, if, you know, I'm only telling you where the DP, where the feasibility committee stands. Um, this is not a planning board decision to say you can or cannot do this. No, nope, I understand that. But what I'm saying is, that decision has already been made. Okay. They already voted on it. Okay, I'm not going to dispute that. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Not going to make a big deal about it. We have seen nothing from the board of selectmen that says it is a softball field or a reserve for DPW yard. Carolyn knows the DPW committee is looking at that location. She also made a mention at the last meeting that the softball field. The the uh, Park and Rex looking at that for a softball field. I don't, I have seen nothing in writing from the Board of Selectmen, so I can't comment on who has, if you would, first dibs on the field. If the Selectmen decide it goes to the softball field, so be it. Let's see something in writing and we can all move on. It's that simple. Okay. So, next, the last question that I have then is what do you guys need from us? If it's going to be a softball field, I don't, I don't know that we need anything, Mr. Dwyer, do you? Well, I think we'd like to see uh, drainage plans or at least a statement from 
Was it Berkshire Design that did the site work there? Oh, the, yes. Okay, so you do have an engineering team looking at it. Yeah, so okay. if we want to know what, whether, uh, you know, whether there are, what the drainage provisions are and um, Probably if they've already been factored in to the, uh, what we've seen and, and approved. Yeah. Should, so, should we have something in writing from the select board saying that? Yeah, we'll, we'll get that. We'll get that. <coughs> we will right. get that. It would yeah. be good to see their language to, to see if they to gave it to you in perpetuity or if they, you know. To protect everybody, they should, the select board should give it to us and get everybody that in writing. Yeah. And, and I think they would have to because there's no way that the state's going to give us $100,000 to build the field and then the next yeah. year have the town tear it up to put in a DPW. Uh, that, just, that would be a waste of everybody's money. I have yeah. no, no $100,000 to build a field. You yes. have no idea. The parking lot alone. How much did they promise? Well, Joe, Joe, don't they give me a hundred thousand points of grass? Are they going to put underground drainage to make sure that they they there? Look at what South Hadley put a softball put put their fields in just uh, off of forty seven, just outside of the center. The Army Corps of Engineers did that. They spent the Army Corps of Engineers spent about six months digging, putting the underground drainage in to make that nice level flat and not hold water. So putting in fields nowadays is quite a project. There, aren't they kind of close to wetlands too, down in the meadow there? That, that, that's all going to be decided by whatever. There is wetlands out back of it. Yes, there is. So, and, and Joe, just so you know, the parking lot alone is almost 27000 just for a gravel parking lot. So, you know, so we want to I thought you had the funding in place already, so I was just wondering how much the funding was. So I do. I'm not, I'm not questioning the amount. I just was yeah. wondering. The money's been earmarked for us for okay. this fiscal year. So, so we were literally starting on, we were coming to you guys to see if there was anything that you needed from us so we could get started around April to start building it. Yeah, I, I, like Mr. Dwyer said, probably drainage and parking. That's okay. That's all you're going to have. Perfect. So if you work for Berkshire Design, they have the underlying plans and yeah. they know what they have done so far. I know it's tough to see. Oh, you can't see it at all. Never no, mind. We can't see it. <laughs> I don't have it on my, my computer. I have it on my phone. Um, but they, they have the initial plans Okay. Um, that were designed when they built the, uh, the fire station. Berkshire did an initial design that included a softball field and also a soccer field. Okay. But so we just need to get that matured. Absolutely. We'll get it on the agenda for the select board for, you know, the first available time. And um, then we will get you the plans from Berkshire design and uh, they'll, they will be meeting next a week from tomorrow. Right. Okay. If you can get on that agenda, I don't know if they have space, but Greg, yeah, I'll work on getting on. We'll do Perfect. That. All right. All right. Well, thank, thank you, you very Pat. much. We'll okay. get you everything you need for the next time. We'll be okay. We'll have everything for you. Okay. Sounds we good. Won't need, we won't need a formal site plan approval on it, will we? I don't think I, so. I don't think so. If if especially to the extent that it was worked into the original plans. Right, uh, okay, just, just, we just wanna make sure everything is in place. That's fine, okay. All right. All right, thanks guys. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Good luck to the winner. <laughs> uh, I had written down Matt McTeague, but I don't see him here. Um, uh, and I wrote down Kip DeVito, and I do see Kip DeVito still here. He's a, um, Mr. Chair, he's a member of our Verizon Wireless team. Okay, fine. Jesse Marino? Same. Same. Okay, and David? David Vivian, Juan Vivian. Latore are also. With okay. Team. Okay. That is the administrative, uh section. Kishore is also interested in the project. Yeah, I'm here for Verizon. Okay. Uh, so we'll, have, we'll open the public meeting on the public hearing and read the notice as it appeared in the Daily Hampshire Gazette. 
The Hadley Planning Board will conduct a Zoom public hearing on Tuesday, February 7, 2023, beginning at 6.45 p.m. Purpose of the hearing is to review the application of Verizon for a site plan approval special permit for wireless tower to install a wireless communication at, I forgot to put the address down, how about that? Oh, at 350 Russell Street onto the existing building. Plans are available by emailing planning at Hadley MA or visit town clerk's office. Details for Zoom meeting are available by going to town uh, agenda, published twice in the Gazette, uh, January 20 and 27. And with that, it's on to you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, my name is Attorney Michael Fenton. I'm a shareholder at the law offices of Schatz, Schwartz & Fenton. Our address is 1441 Main Street, Suite 1100 in Springfield. We're here tonight as counsel to Selco Partnership doing business as Verizon Wireless, and we're joined by the full complement of our Verizon Wireless team and consultants. Uh, Kip DeVito and Jay LaTorre are both here as our radio frequency engineers. Uh, Jesse Marino and his counterpart on behalf of Proterra Design Group, our engineering firm, and David Vivian is our site acquisition and leasing specialist. The proposal before you is uh, seeking a special permit to install antennas on the rooftop along with uh, support equipment at 350 Russell Street, uh, the Homewood Suites. Uh, these antenna and support equipment were a part of the submittal meeting where I last appeared before you on January 3rd. Uh, the antennas will all be enclosed behind RF-friendly screening on the rooftop and comply in all respects with the dimensional and use requirements of the Hadley Town uh, bylaws and zoning bylaw. Uh, we are located within the narrow wireless uh, telecommunication services district and have submitted to you a full complement of supporting due diligence and materials as required under the bylaw, uh, some pertaining to RF and describing the need for the site and then the balance uh, describing the schematics and uh, photo simulations showing what the um, de minimis impact will be as a result of this installation. So uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I invite uh, Proterra Design Group to uh, show you the plans and the photo simulations that they've prepared. And if there's any questions about that or any questions after that presentation of the plans and photo simulations, uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions, whether it be related to siting or RF or otherwise. So, Jesse? Sure. Um, could I get to be able to share the screen? You should be set for that. Okay. Let's give it a shot here. Everybody see that? It should be the cover yes. of the plan set? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, so we're here before you. Um, this is a, a Verizon Wireless uh, communications facility. So it's a roof-mounted, uh, concealed rooftop facility. Uh, it's known by Verizon as Hadley 5. Um, it's at the corner of Russell Street and uh, on North Maple Street. I think that's known as the uh, Hadley Corners area. Um, kind of the same set of parcels as, as Home Depot. Um, we're actually on this um, C2 parcel. It's where the Homewood Suites is. Um, so access is off of Russell Street, um, off of what's uh, known as um, the Hadley Corner Drive. Uh, the, the, uh, the hotel is located on this parcel here. That's uh, a 2.4 acre parcel. Um, sort of, it's a, basically it appears like it's set up here as like a condo. Um, looking at the aerial, um, this is when it was under construction. It was a newly, newly constructed uh, hotel uh, a few years back. Um, it's about a hundred unit facility. Um, and uh, this is where Verizon would be locating um, or attempting to co-locate their equipment. Uh, this is the facility, Homewood Suites. Um, I think its uh, address now is, is known as 340 Russell Street, uh, just to clarify that. 
Um, I know it says 350 on most of our documentation, and uh, it looks to me like um, the assessor's office had this as 350. So we have field cards that show it as 350. Um, but if you go to Homewood Suites here, I think their mailing address is 340. Uh, so just to clarify that. Um, we are um, on this parcel here. It's a bit, this building's a C-shaped building. Uh, we have both ground and roof equipment. Our ground equipment will be located in this nook on the back side of the building. Um, it's approximately a 10 by 15 foot area. Our rooftop equipment, I'll zoom in here a little bit. This is the Hadley Corner aerial again. So again, our rooftop equipment is back here. This is the C-shaped uh, building that is the Homewood Suites. We have our ground equipment back here. And then our roof mounted antenna equipment are, is in two locations towards the back side of the building. This is sort of a zoomed in look of the building. Again, um, north is straight up the page here. Uh, in the rear of the facility is our ground equipment. Up on the roof, we have two uh, concealed locations. Basically, we have a transparent screen wall um, that we're proposing to mount atop the uh, stairwell, uh, the stairwell penthouses on either end here. And this would conceal the antenna equipment that would be located inside. Um, they're approximately, uh, this one here is approximately nine by 16 uh, by about five feet high above the penthouse roof line. Uh, this one here is about six by 16. It's seven feet above the stairwell roof line, but um, just under five feet under the main roof line. So this, this illustrates it a little bit better. This is an elevation view. This is sort of the um, west elevation as if you were looking um, you know, from the wetland area towards the building. So in the back, there's the, the stairwell uh, penthouse, and we're proposing to locate on top of that on one side. And then in the front of the building, um, there'd be another one here. So, so you're installing this on the roof of a building in which people are living, some for extended stays. Is there any health risk of having these whatever ways Mr. Mr. Sarzinski, Mr. Sarzinski, please let him finish. Okay. okay, we'll ask questions at the end. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. There are others on this call that can that can answer answer that. Um, this is kind of a zoomed in area just to show you kind of give you some scale of the equipment. So again, um, this would be looking from sort of the parking lot kind of zoomed in. We'd have a, a sort of a screen wall uh, that would go around. Uh, where the antennas would be so they'd be concealed behind this and we'd be looking to match the color and the um, architectural features of the building um, and able to hide it so we could be able to hide it better. Um, as was stated we did some simulations basically um, we took some um, geo-referenced photos from um, locations on the site and nearby and we um, developed the model that we superimposed on that. Um, so to give you an idea of what this would look like uh, from ground level. So again, um, we did about uh, five or six locations here and I'll just run, run through some of those with you. So this is the first location. This is in the uh, Home Depot parking lot. Um, we're looking uh, westerly. And uh, we're gonna be in this area here. So this is what it would look like now. Um, after it'd be constructed, you can see that we have uh, the screen wall located here over the stairwell. So again, that's now, uh, this is what we'd be proposing. Um, this is sort of a different view. This is up sort of more by Aldi's. Um, the one you previously looked at was right here. So we're gonna show, uh, this is kind of what it looks like now. And this is what it looked like, the two areas. You can see the one on this side, and then the one towards the back. 
This is looking from the front, um, the front side of the building. So this is um, sort of right behind uh, the, uh, the the tire shop there, um, in front of Chipotle. So here is what it looks like now. And again, back here, this would be the, the screen wall structure. And I'll show you that again. Um, this is from farther away, sort of out by North Maple or just, just onto the parcel where uh, uh, Home Depot is. So this is kind of a look of what we look across the parking lot. So there's what it looks like now. Here's what we're predicting with the screen walls. This is from the uh, parcel that's um, sort of to the west of this facility there. It's vacant right now. Um, we chose this one to get a kind of a better look at this rear area. Um, but again, um, here is from that just off the street there and the screen wall structure up here. You can see a little bit of the one in the front, but, but not really. Just a very little bit pokes up. This is the rear of the facility where there's a nook. So we want to kind of use this nook here. Uh, we have a couple of uh, refrigerator sized cabinets that we uh, put in this area. Um, it's about a 10 by 15 foot area. Um, and we be prosing a, a canopy with a, uh, a screen fence enclosure. Uh, so this is what it looks like now. This is what it'd be look like after our equipment's installed there. So the idea is that um, you wouldn't really see it from, from ground level here unless you really looked over the fence here. Um, that's the, the basic presentation I have, and you feel free to answer any questions you guys may have. Can we just go back to how far the, how, uh, Uh, how far the radial, uh, the, the, how, how big are they? How far do they extend? Okay, sure. We can go back to that. So again, there's, uh, I know there's a lot going on here, so I'll, I'll try to go. Try so again, here's our ground equipment in the back up top. So there's a, uh, so all these is kind of over here. Home Depot is over to the right. So there's a stairwell tower here, and there's one in the back here. So I guess this would probably be the best one. So if we kind of zoom in on those areas, um, this is the one um, closest to all these. And uh, this is the one to the sort of the uh, northwest of the facility. So they're both stairwell penthouses, but the way that the roof line is in the building, uh, this, this stairwell uh, does not have roof access. So in order to fit the antennas here, we're seven feet off of this, but the overall main building roof line we're only about four feet above. Okay. okay. What is the overall height of the, the building? Ground to the top of the tower over this building. Yeah, this drawing right here. Yeah. So, um, so the main roof is down here, and then there's the roof line varies across here. So that the penthouse roof now is just under 44 feet, and we'd be looking to be just under you know 49 feet at the top. So five feet above that area above that line on that side so, so just under 49 feet hmm. on, the, on the other side it's a little bit different you can kind of see here so this is to the rear where there's um there's a stairwell here but this has roof access so it's a little taller the one at the front is just a uh, stairwell so in that area um our antennas are actually facing this way, so we don't need it as high. So again, we're about seven feet above this line, but the overall main <coughs> line of the building, we're about four feet. Does that answer your, hopefully that answers yep, your question. Yeah, that's, that, I was just looking at, at how it fit in with the bylaw with uh, the... Yeah, so, Remember Section here, 14.6. Yeah, this is the building here. So this roof line kind of juts up and down and up and down. And if we zoom in here, this is one stair tower. See how this one's lower. So 
you know, we're measuring from this main sort of line here up yep. to that. And we encourage, we encourage varied roof lines just to break things up a little bit. Yeah, I know. I was reading your bylaw there, and it's good because it, I mean, it helps with the massing and doesn't look like a long strip mall, right? It's got, it's got some... some um, so who, who will own this, Verizon Wireless or, or the hotel? Yeah. Uh, so this is a this is a, a Verizon Wireless who own this. Um, there be some kind of a leasing arrangement made with the hotel. To so so Dan Jomek, the assessor, should send the bill to Verizon Wireless. Yes, for, you mean for the any tax that would be due for, on the equipment? Oh, yeah. or, or the, the yeah, pretty, yes. I think the pretty significant excise tax. Uh, how much is the total cost of this installation? Um, I don't know that I have that information, but um, I don't know if the, if the attorneys do or not. But uh, yeah, I know what you mean. There'll be some kind of a, a property tax on on the value of, of, of the installation. Sure. We will make sure that the assessors get a copy of the decision of the board so that yeah. they can. I mean, there are there are other obviously installations like this in town. There's one across the street that I think is T-Mobile. So there's there's precedent. I'm sure there's a. There's a calculation that's done at the assessor's office, and um, it, it would be however however the town does it now. Mr. Chairman, this is uh, David Vivian, the site act uh, for Verizon. And um, uh, the actual cost will be bid out when we go to build and uh, submit the uh, building permit. Ballpark, a million, 10 million? Mm -hmm. Oh no, no! It would be something more on the order of, uh, say, four to five hundred thousand. Okay. Uh, any concerns as to the health of people living in the building? We got some. These are, this is a long-term oh. stay, if you want. You know. I, I thank you for the question. We um, we have one of our radio frequency experts that can speak more eloquently to that, but just. Broadly, Verizon is on many residential structures and hospitals in the Pioneer Valley and Hampshire and Hamden County area. And uh, as a federal license holder, uh, comply at all times with FCC regulations regarding emissions. But if there's anything further you'd like to add, Kip, that's your area. Hi, good evening. Excuse me. Do they have facilities on the top of hotels where people live? Yes. Yes. We, okay. have, we have one down the street at uh, oh. Oh, the Econo okay. Lodge. Okay. Um, good evening. My name is Kip DeVito. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so to speak to that question, uh, we did submit a uh, third-party study for the RF emissions, um, the safety aspect of this, and it was determined that we are well below the FCC allowed emissions limits. Um, and we, we did submit um, documentation, photos that do depict that. And we also will be putting up uh, signs that will um, be a part of our installation that will help anybody working on the roof um, understand that our antennas are there and what to do while working around them. So they will be safe. We are licensed um, by the FCC. In order to be licensed, we must be, we must show in, that we are in compliance. Um, and like Michael said, we do have installations on rooftops and hospitals um, all over the country. Okay, thanks. I got a question that this is actually from the the uh, police and fire chief, in that there is a number of uh, cell towers in this section of town. There's across the street. There's one at Stop and Shop. You're putting one in, and he's made the comment that it seems like in this particular area of Route Nine radio transmissions from the police and fire are deteriorating and he's not blaming the cell towers except this is the only area of town where there seems to be a concentration of cellular to cell towers and um it, it's, it's going radio transmission by the public public communications is not what it used to be is could there be any correlation between those two? I, I, I don't know if I have the answer for that. I, I don't know. I can't speak to what they're using for equipment and frequencies. 
Um, maybe, uh, Jay, would you be able to step in here? Sure. Uh, good evening. Uh, this is Jay Latore, radio frequency engineer at Verizon. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm here. Uh, my home address is 122 Forest Hills Road, Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, I, I can't say that I've spoken to the, the Hadley police chief before. I, I may have in, in different times because as some of you gentlemen may know, um, many years ago, we were before you to um, uh, propose a tower at the Hadley Public Safety Complex. Um, uh, I know I've been in touch with the Amherst Fire Chief uh, in the last year or two, and, and that has come up um, before that specific comment around Route 9. So th there's two things I'll say. First, uh, I'm not aware of any uh, possibility that Verizon's radio frequency mm -hmm. transmissions um, you know, maybe interfering with uh, any town of Hadley, you know, either municipal or public safety radio frequency transmissions. As an FCC license holder, we have very specific chunks of spectrum that we own and deploy. They are, they are different from public safety. And uh, just like we have uh, RF emissions requirements we have to mandate, we have those same requirements for um, interference with other operators in different frequencies. So if there ever was a problem, um, you know, Verizon would kind of have an obligation to work with any public safety entity to, you know, basically figure out what the, what the potential interference is. More often than not, it's, it's not us um, because our, our radios are really designed to only transmit in certain ways. The, the most common thing that, that causes interference we see is uh, old repeater systems in individuals' homes or um, old, say, like AM uh, radio antennas that, you know, that have been up on a tower for 20 years. Those can cause some issues. The one thing I, I will say is, is certainly, and I'm, I'm going to kind of speak to this as someone that, you know, went to my uh, UMass Amherst 20 years ago. Um, certainly, I've seen in, in my lifetime the, the growth of, you know, commercial activity on Route 9. And um, part of the reason and, and for this facility, you know, has acknowledged the fact that um, there is a growth in, in, you know, demand for businesses in this area. And what that's done is place the strain on the surrounding facilities um, that are trying to, you know, cover all of that traffic. You know, I have experiences as a, as a young person driving home on Route 9 and five o'clock uh, on a Friday, leaving school and coming back to Springfield and being backed up, you know, for five or six miles before getting on the highway to 91. And so, you know, um, this facility, I think, is going to really improve that experience. And it's important because while I don't know specifically, you know, if the town of Hadley Public Safety um, is using, you know, Verizon phones, either for their, you know, day-to-day -day communications outside walkie-talkies or say like um, they're, um, you know, they have uh, computers in the police cars that they use to, to look up, you know, records and things like that. But um, if they are and they're working in this area, you know, certainly they're going to see an improvement with this facility um, because, you know, the network continues to, to grow in demand and uh, this is an important investment to meet that demand. Okay. <clears throat> Other questions? Comments? Everybody good? You're, you're muted, Bill. You're still muted. Mr. Dwyer, you are muted. You're still muted, Bill. Here we go. Okay. Press the space bar. Should have unmuted. <laughs> um, do you have uh, any rendering of coverage areas of other cell towers in the vicinity? Is that part of the package? Yes. Uh, Kip, maybe you can walk through the engineering necessity case and show the coverage maps. Of course. Is it all right that I share my screen? Go ahead. Thank you. So this is the, uh, the RF 
uh, engineering and SSD case that was submitted. Um, I'll skip ahead to the um, coverage maps. All right, so the first one here, um, this is for our 700, we, like my colleague Jay was saying, we have um, multiple frequencies. This is our first one, it's our, our base layer, coverage layer, it's 700 megahertz. Um, in the air, we have maybe two macros um, covering the stretch of road, this area. Um, and, and this site that we're proposing falls about in between them. Um, and, and it's gonna fill in the gap of coverage here along the Route 9 um, area and, and mostly for, for all these businesses in the area here. Um, the colors here are represented by this label up here. Um, green is what we would consider a signal level that's strong enough to be considered reliable in building coverage. The yellow is strong enough to be considered in uh, reliable in vehicle service. And the gray is reliable outdoor service here. So this site here is proposed to fill in the gap between these two sites, providing a more reliable coverage to the area here. Um, this is a, a coverage plot of just the site itself, um, same color patterns, but it's just a coverage, 700 megahertz coverage of just the proposed site. Moving on here, we show another um, frequency that we deploy. Uh, this is the 2100 megahertz. It's higher in frequency and um, the characters to that just, um, it, it's gonna attenuate more so than 700 or 850 would just because it's a higher frequency. So you can see that the footprints are, are smaller than they were that the 700 would provide. Um, but when we're able to deploy more frequencies, then we're able to offload the capacity, the demand, the, the usage from all the new devices coming onto our network. And again, this is the 2100 megahertz footprint of just a proposed site. This is our 850 or yeah, 850 megahertz, um, one of the frequencies that we deploy 5G on. Um, as you can see here, there's only one existing site in the area. Um, there will become two with the proposed site. And you can see that the, these footprints for this frequency is somewhere in between 700 and 850. That's, that's what we have for coverage plots. So are you running all three of those in the new location? The the 700, the 2100? Yeah. There's, and the 850 have, is only at the Hadley Emergency Center, right? Correct. Uh, at this time, yes. At, but, at this um, we, we, we do deploy multiple frequencies at our sites. Um, we have licenses that cover ranges of frequencies and we'll deploy them all um, at every site that we can when we get um, either to modifying them or building them. Um, okay. Thank you. Yeah. That would explain, I work at UMass and uh, when there's a hockey game, you can't get coverage because everybody's in there with their phones going. Yeah. Talk about bandwidth. Other questions, comments? Seeing none? Here, do we hear anything? Anyone in the public? No. Is that Mark? Have we heard anything? Obviously not tonight, but have we heard anything over the past two weeks from anyone in the public? No? No. Okay. No. I have received nothing at the uh, planning email. No. Okay. Flying under the radar or being embraced. Everybody wants their cell phones and their, <laughs> it was just a simple phone it would be easy, but that's not what anybody uses anymore. I would just note that I think that they have, um, shown concern and care for aesthetics by placing it at the northwest and northeast corners of the building and doing it very pleasingly. So I appreciate that. I agree. 
Thank you. I would be willing to bet. I would be willing to bet Mr. Parmar had uh, two cents to say on that one. If a balloon flies over and uh, emits an electrotransmitting wavelength, could it stop the cell phone transmission? That's kind of a, a joke. Is it a weather balloon? From what country? <laughs> a Canadian weather balloon? <laughs> No, I think it's a little bit more east of Canada. <laughs> or west, whatever way you want to go at We digress. Yes. Well, I'm ready to make a motion if there's nothing else to talk about. I'll make a motion, Mr. Dwyer. Okay, so I'll make a motion to uh, approve the application uh, based on the following findings. And upon the following conditions, project satisfies the general purposes of site plan approval bylaw. Project is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the wireless communication special permit bylaw. Project is not detrimental to the established or future character of the neighborhood. Intended uses are not prohibited by the terms of the bylaw and are permitted thereby. The application will be as based on the package you have submitted. Um, I'll double check the dates. Um, you haven't updated anything since you filed, have you? We have not. Okay, uh, you're not asking for any waivers. Uh, copies of uh, the application have been uh, distributed as provided in the bylaw. Uh, proposal satisfies the site plan review criteria and the commercial development performance standards. Um, so the design features are uh, considered an integral part of the terms of the approval. Um, approval is for the following uses only, wireless communication facility. Um, I think in this case, we can dispense with the removal bond because I am sure that uh, the landlord has taken care of that. Um, if they walk away from it, that's between landlord and tenant. So uh, approval of other boards, if and as required, including the Conservation Commission. Um, and uh, this uh, actually not using any water, not using any sewer. It's really not affected by Conservation Commission. This is on an existing structure. So we'll just say state agencies with jurisdiction. Uh, and uh, that is it. That is the motion. I would second. second. Mark Dunn is seconded. Any other, any other discussion? Here, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Good luck, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we'll Thank get you very this much. written up over the next couple of weeks and get it out to you and to the uh, the abutters. The uh, there are our envelopes and mailing labels in our mailbox for the last three public hearings, Bill, including if you haven't already got them for the uh, coffee shop, um, Emily Ilke, Ike, and I believe this one should be in the mailbox. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would note that um, they answered our questions mostly without answering the questions. They would usually start with, I can't speak to that. And then they would go on about what they could speak to their personal experience. So, but still, I, I didn't bring that up then because I didn't feel it. Well, as far as RF being a safety deal, all I can do is quote what they have for right. USDA and, and, and whatever other government agencies and stuff like that. And there is, you know, we're not, we're not looking for hearsay here, only facts. Right. So, unfortunately, that's what we have to deal with. Uh, Mr. Comia, welcome. Welcome. 
Ken, don't take this personally, but I have to step away for a few minutes. Uh, Jim, I made you co-host. Okay. Time to I'm going to leave the recording running, and I will turn it off after the meeting's over. Okay. Thanks, Bill. Hi, board. Hello. Hello. Um, I so hope he gave you uh, the ability to share, or if you didn't, Jim can. Yes, I have the ability to share. Okay, good. Um, so I think where we left off, there there was a couple of things in in the you know a portfolio of work um, with regards to um, looking at um, the private event venue um, as well as the ag related uses bylaw um, draft. Um, I didn't, you know, so I think there's conversation to be had regarding that. I haven't made any changes. My understanding was that maybe the board wanted to take one more look at that. Um, in addition to um, um, where we left off with the affordable housing payments in lieu of, as well as um, uh, where, the permitting guide. Um, so there's just a bunch of projects that are kind of floating out there. Um, and we'll figure out, you know, what those priorities are, especially as you approach town meeting. Um, but I don't know, Jim, if you want to address certain things and maybe, um, you know, go from that point or. I, I have made a few a few edits, suggested edits to the uh, event bylaw. And what was the other one you called it? The, the uh, agriculturally uh, related uses. Private, private event and ag-related zoning. I don't know if you want to go over that with Ken or we want to go over it later in the meeting, but we want to talk about it anyways. So probably as good a time as any. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me try to get this going here. All right. How about... Uh, Can everybody see that one? Still seeing your file folder. What's that? If you open the file, we're not seeing the file. We're just seeing your... Are you seeing the warrant article number one right now? No. No? No. Maybe just re-click it one more time, Jim. Okay. Yeah, you want to open the document before you share. Unless Jim is sharing his full screen, which is possible, maybe. Right, I mean, there is a preview on the far right of your, but we're not seeing it opened. What we're seeing is your file manager app. You are sharing. It tells me you are screen sharing. Yeah, but what we're seeing is your file folders. File folder, okay. So I think if you end share and then and then start again, if you have the file open. Stop share. Now if you go to share, it should give you options to choose from. Okay. All righty. We're back in your Did that come up? Are you still seeing the file? We're still seeing the file folders. Yeah, we're still <laughs> seeing the folder. What am I doing wrong? Have you opened the Word document before you share? Um... Hey, let me. Am I supposed to? Yes. Okay. All right. 
All right, here we go. Okay, we're opening the document. Screen share. And it should give you a choice of which window mm -hmm. you want to share. And then you have to click share again at the bottom. Yes. That's Great. it. All right, finally. Okay. So this is the agricultural things, if you would. And I haven't really made anything except at the very end, or right near the end here, I in, in red, I've added, it's before it was, I added the, the stuff in red. Club events and okay. any restaurant. Um, Probably not a big deal. And then at the very end, it says any building under uh, 8.32, that was go going to be completely eliminated. But I says that's what did, I was afraid that that might completely take agricultural uses as putting them into too much of a uh, subjective decision as what is or is not exempt. This way it's clearly spelled out if it's used exclusively for growing of agriculture horticulture yada yada or maintaining its own on-site equipment no special no site plan or they're there just like they are today you could go ahead and do it without anything except the building that required building electrical permits etc okay. i think that that that's great i think um you know i know some communities have considered um certain sizes um, but if the board or the town, you know, I don't know how big the buildings in your agriculturally zoned and if you even care about um, the size of the buildings that are, um, you may be seeing um, that wouldn't necessarily based on this um, be reviewed by the planning board, but rather by the building department. Um, that's probably just something to consider. I don't know if there is any. Well, I mean. So some of the ag buildings in town are fairly sizable. There's no question mm -hmm. about it. Um, but usually those that are, are set way off from the properties. Yeah. And they're not really causing a drainage problem because they, the, typically the farmer owns a lot of the surrounding property around it. So any runoff is normally staying on their property. Jim, a bit of, a bit of correction. Uh, there's two greenhouse uh, farms that they probably 10 or 12 greenhouses. They have a tendency to build the greenhouses up, thereby diverting water onto the neighbor's property. Uh, I had one experience on my farm and they built it up about three feet. And so, but they don't have to go through any permits. Okay. Uh, how do we handle that? And and right now there's a, uh, a a bit of a drainage problem off Meadow Street, North Amherst, Hadley area with that ditches there. And uh, uh, some oh, of the drainage has been blamed onto those greenhouses that were put up. He, that, that, that guy's got a lot of, that farmer has a lot of greenhouses there and he's putting up more. Yeah, and he, where does the water go? And, and no, that's a good point. I, yeah. I, I'm open to suggestions. I, uh, yeah, I, I don't, okay. I don't, we know. don't need to make that decision here, but how do you word 8.3.2 to address that? Let's, let's think about that and get back to us. Yeah. Okay. And, and the other thing is, uh, uh, I think in Berry Mass, some farmer says, well, how are you going to handle, uh, the mud bog? Evidently they've got, they wet the field down and they, have these mud bog pickups come in and they race around and they they make a lot of noise and they're very popular, however. So do we handle those? That, that, that's, that's not under this bylaw. Okay. That would be under the next bylaw we're gonna look at. Especially that bylaw. Jim, if you scroll down again, where you said warrant to article two, do you mean in the black, do you mean that to say removing the section or replacing it as written below? 
Yeah, good point, Mark. Does Does it, it, you, know? you say amend Hadley's zoning bylaw by removing section 8.32, but then you rewrite it in red. That, that's crossed out. That that the, the, that's X'd out, so we're not gonna we're not gonna use that. But it looks like you've rewritten it in red, no? That was my previous um, amendment. So that just needs to be changed. That language eight, needs to say eight point three point two in red is what it will be. Is what the existing eight point three point two in blue will be replaced with. Okay, so that's why I just thought you might want to say remove the current and add the new, or just replace. You know. Yeah, I think you're right. Because when you say you know, if you vote on removing it, it sounds like you can't amend it. You've taken it out. Yeah, that that's yeah, just that's, semantics that maybe the town the, the, the part the, the 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 two crossed out sections will be will not appear anywhere. That's gone. Right. The the, the place of red is what we're going to see. Right. So we just going to think of how can we word the eight the revised eight point three point two to include something about. Addressing Joe's the uh, concern about building up, if it's for what he just said. So, so I think I think one of the things that so the based on this um, site plan approval would not be required for um, any sort of building that has those particular uses. So would the greenhouse be, the greenhouse then presumably would not be handled or be reviewed by the planning board. Um, That's correct. Well, okay. So how should, how should we handle the drainage or should we not handle it? I mean, if you put five acres of greenhouses on a, piece of property, certainly there's no penetration of the water on site. It goes somewhere. Yeah. Um, Yeah, you, you can't give a carte blanche either because then it could make a mess of real in your in what you're talking about, Joe. You could have an exception that... Uh, One example that with Montgomery uh, Rose's move from the, the uh, you know, Home Depot site, they, they built the greenhouses that they put up there by three feet in the water drained uh, my particular property. It, 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 harmed, it harmed a, a rut in, in adjacent land uh, three feet deep and four or five feet wide. I mean, it was substantial. It's not just a little water floating. Mr. Tom, you've got a comment. Yeah, a few, a few things. Um, I don't have the, the mess amendment for in, at home here. I'm at home. But um, like as far as permitting for a greenhouse, there may be an exception, but I believe most of them, unless it gets to a certain size, that are exempt from a permit. But I did find, I did research, and they do need to meet all setbacks. But in the you know internet and the IBC, they do do not require a permit unless something triggers, which I'll have to look tomorrow at the office. Um, a challenge that I've been having, um, and the tenth edition is going to help it, is we in addition go on one of the farm buildings, and I went out there, and there was 30, 30 employees. You know, I, I pull out and there's 50 cars and, um, you know, they're working in unsafe conditions. So Mike and I met with state inspectors and fire state, you know, fire marshals and it'd be under the building code. I could have enforced it. Um, it needed to be sprinkler. I mean, this building was 12,000 square feet. And that's where the 10th edition of the code is going to help us is because um, it's, it's a challenge. It would have been politically a mess for, for Mike and I to, to request that. But moving forward, the 10th edition is going to straighten that out, that it's a, it's going to be cut and dry, that these buildings, unfortunately, are more of a manufacturing. This produce is going across the state, country. And, you know, with all those employees in there, they have to, you know, start meeting the regular codes. Um, but, the, uh, like I said, the greenhouses just have to meet setbacks, as far as I can know. Okay, so greenhouses are going to... Green, greenhouses by themselves 
are a regulatory problem because they're, they're exempt from a lot of stuff. Is what you're saying. Okay. So we need to address the earth issues of a greenhouse more than the greenhouse themselves. But I'm, in other words, if they're going to be building up to put a greenhouse to get it out of a water area, we need to, we need to know that, you need to know that, so they don't create a drainage issue for others. That would be helpful for later on, yes. Like Mr. Zagronik said, that's where you run into the problem. If, if we just left it all exempt on something like that. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to make a comment to think about here. Uh, Are you thinking, Jim, or are you muted? <laughs> no, I'm not muted. Okay. I shouldn't be. Am I muted? No. no. Well, there was silence there, so I was wondering what's up. He's <laughs> typing. I mean, if there's any any way of addressing something like that, is you could say any the square footage of the of you know, one greenhouse is not going to make a significant difference, but seven or eight will. Ten or twelve will obviously make more. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just, I just put that last comment in to think about how can, okay. what, what, what wording, what verbiage can be put in there to try to address this a little bit, so that we, so that I and we can think about it. Okay, that's all that that's for, and that, that's not, that's just that, that, however, is not part of the bylaw by any stretch. Yeah, because certainly they, the uh, you know, people traditionally bring in fill uh, and uh, they build them up. Right. So it, it does interfere with drainage. Yeah. Okay. Has the board ever used the um, soil removal bylaw? No. No, that, that was very, very controversial. And yeah. uh, I don't believe so. No. That had to do, well, there was a lot of gravel pits opening up in town when uh, 116 was being constructed as well as 91. And it was kind of like a wild west with trucks going all over town and obviously heavy trucks roading the roads, so. Okay, well, let's look at, all right. All right, let's try it again here. Everybody see this one? Yes. Private event venue? Yep. Yes. Oh, that time it worked cool. Good. Same thing here. I put stuff in red. Um, the way this was worded, it seemed like if somebody wanted to have a wedding party, a party, a, a wedding party on their site for their, say this to their child, it would not, it would, they would need a special event venue from the planning board. So I want to make it known that if somebody has a one-time event, and I've defined it as one for 12 month period, such as a family, relative wedding, graduation, et cetera, it shall be exempt from the bylaw. Good point. Okay. So, Jim, I think one of the things that initially this bylaw suggests is the private event venue utilizes the word private event, which there has to be a permitting process by which the planning board would identify this private event venue. So I think that's, it. it's it's clear based on the exemptions. And I think the exemptions do make it 
more clarified. However, someone will be coming, assuming that the town passes this, or if the town passes this, someone will be coming to the planning board with an application that says, we want to be a private event venue. Um, we're in the AR zoning district, and we're going to go through this permitting process. But the I guess, you know, the the exemption, to, that, that's great language to, to clarify that, but I think this is very specific in that someone will be coming to the board or to the town with a permit to create or be a private event venue um, within that zone. So not homes, typically, unless they wanted to have some commercial um, component, um, would be doing that, I think. Right. That, that was what I thought, too. A private event venue means they're going to have, in a private home, they're going to have private events more than once a year. And, yes, we, wanna, we want to permit that. But if somebody wants to simply open their home up for their child's wedding, it would give the impression they would have to come to this special. I mean, we could exempt them, but nothing in the bylaw gave us authority to waive, the, waive this uh, section of the bylaw. So I figured, well, it's either give authority or put the exemption in. I think the exemption is a little bit more clear. We don't want people to have to come before us if they're having a home wedding. That's exactly correct. So we don't have to take a vote on it. They're, they're automatically exempt by right. That's what, that's what this says. That's correct. Okay. Unless, um, they, unless they start using their site as a venue for others and they're doing it repeatedly so yeah if it's a one-off yeah. that's okay yeah how do the we handle things? the how do we handle the uh town commons that's Does a blackman right now have control over it board of selectmen so the asparagus festival and if they wanted to make a uh uh, a beer tasting festival, uh, any kind of festival, it well, can be done. Th that most of the, 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 a quarter of the town common, no. Over half the town common is in the business district. So, um, you know, it's not agriculture residential, except for the rear half of the, of the, of the South Common. Certainly, the cars are parked everywhere. It's it's not just the uh, the idea of a business. It's no. and, and th th that's that's correct, Joe. And the fire de the board of selectmen and the fire department and the police department are all are realizing they need to do a better job of policing that. And they may very well say that for using the the town common. Part of the approval, the permit process may be to go to the planning board and apply this section. So that'll be up to the board of selectmen. Okay, minimum size parcel. I went from 10 acres to five acres. 10 acres just sounded like, boy, that's an awfully big event venue. Uh, five acres corresponds to the state statute. Of what? Of, uh, Five acres uh, for 61A and stuff like that. You need oh, five for, for farming. Yeah. Okay. Um, I did put under the private event venue that says that you should have adequate water and permanent on-site wastewater. The uh, the original one allowed porta potties, and I'm thinking, you know, do we really want to? Do we really want porta potties? But if you make somebody put us. A sewer line, and if it's on sewer, it's going to cost megabucks. So. Well, if they're going to have a if they're going to have a private venue over and over, do we okay. want them to have real restrooms? I hear you. Yeah, I mean, we're not trying to encourage private venues by any stretch. We want to regulate those that have it. So my thing is, I mean, porta potties. To me, a disgusting little thing that you have in a, in a work site. Or the Patriots game. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jim, if, if someone asks, uh, what, what are we trying to prevent? Like what? I mean, these venues. Has something been cropping up that are persistently 
annoying us, the uh, other people in town. I know one is the uh, the band, the uh, you know the parking, etc., for uh, the ice cream place on Mill Valley Road. But well, it doesn't seem to be annoying anybody but us. No, I, yeah, I'm almost I'm almost with you, Mike. So uh, the, the, the the police and fire have had. Have had have had had issues with that. Well, they can just start ticketing cars. I, I, uh, well, when you say, well, you, you can start ticketing cars, but if you're trying to get through there with a fire truck or an emergency vehicle and the cars are on the road, you're going to go out there with a ticket, Joe, and start putting tickets on there. The police and fire still can't get through. We're trying to prevent a problem, not address it after the fact. I mean, if the board feels this this bylaw is no good, we can scrap it. But the police and fire are looking for these things. Would that go on this town meeting? Yes. Well, that's that's the goal. That's a bit. It's a bit quick. Are we putting a special event and private event into the definitions? Into what? Are we defining? what a special event or a private event is. Yes, right up here. But are we defining it, as he said, in definitions? The beginning of the bylaw. Oh, oh, okay. So we would have to take, we could take these, we could put these into the definition section. You're right. Yeah, that's the intention. It's said amend section 1.2. That's where you have your definition. Okay, okay. So, but that doesn't, does that define a special event as well? That just seems to define a private event and a private event venue. Oh, we just have to change the name of that bylaw, sorry. Private event venue. Um, so add 5.10, Jim, where that oh. word black, instead of special, it's private. So this, uh, not to throw you for a loop, but uh, we we just finished talking about this. Or I I worked with the town of Amherst on um, this very particular bylaw. They're arriving at it though, um, and have addressed also their public spaces. So as Joe had mentioned about the town comment, um, there is a mechanism by which someone could, whether it's the town, whether it's a private entity, if you know you have events like the Asparagus Festival or something else, presumably there would be some sort of permitting that would happen. Um, in just in summary of the particular bylaw um, that we worked on in Hammers that they're trying to move forward with is that the um, there is um, some some authority by the building commissioner to just approve um, events that are one-offs or one-time things. Obviously there's other components to that like public safety and board of health, um, but the planning board would be involved um, where there's multiple events. So does, does like, Amherst allow, does that, excuse me, can does Amherst allow entities from outside of town to come in and use public facilities, i.e. the common. So in Amherst, I think they alluded to um, some sort of um, race that they do in the town area, um, the town downtown, um, and a festival that is run by a bank um, that they allow to use the town common. Um, it, it's so, the, the bank's in town though, right? Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. The carnival too around graduation time. Yeah, but that's that's the Rotary Club or Lions Club or something. Okay, that's who put sponsors that. But how do you handle the? How's Amherst going to handle the learning blowouts uh, where these uh, apartment complexes have? Oh, that's that's uh, thousands of people coming in. That's not regulated. Well, I don't know how it's regulated. That's not, that's not town. That's not town property. My question was: Do they allow? Would they allow someone from Boston to come in, or for that matter, Hadley, and use the Amherst Town Common for an event? Yes. 
Yeah, they do. They have the uh, the parking is for uh, a farmers market. Farmers market. They have they've had the, the town fair there. Yeah, but they but have, the farmers market. The town, the, the town fair is sponsored by the Rotary Club in North in Amherst. The farmers market is sponsored by by an Amherst entity, which name escapes me. Yeah, but the Rotary the Rotary Club is not a is, is is a private entity. But it's located in Amherst. Oh, I see. You're talking out of, out of the Hadley. area. Meets in Hadley. Oh, I don't know. Uh, my point is, there was a question concerning the Asparagus Festival in Hadley because it was not sponsored by a Hadley institution. It was sponsored by WFCR okay. out of Northampton or something. Uh, Tom Quinlan brought this up at the last meeting. Okay. His hand is raised. I was just wondering if, if, that, that if you were asking the, the select the board if they, yeah, if the select yeah, board would the, want the, a little The select extra board help. has issues, has control over the town common, not the planning board. I'm not trying to yeah. cut you off, Mike, but it's, 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 it's not exactly apples and apples to the bylaw here. That's why I was wondering, would the select board want to maybe have, ask them if they'd want you to have a little control over it? You know, as far as direction with the people before they had to go in front of them. Hmm. That's a good question. That's a good, that's 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 possible. Does this definition? I don't remember. Does it cover multiple days? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that's that's the that's the under the that's in the definition. You got the exemption for a one-time event, and then you got the private events that could cover multiple that are intended to be more than once. Well, I mean, I was saying like if it went Friday, Saturday, Sunday, is that one event or is that three events? How would that matter? Relative well, to the bylaw. If we had uh, a new Woodstock and uh, in Hadley. <laughs> well, but what I'm saying is, how would that have any effect on the bylaw? If they met the bylaw for one day, yeah, they're going to meet it for all the days. Even if it's if it's a month long event, they're going to meet it. Right. Um. There would be more of a uh, that would be more of an issue, I would think, for the board of selectmen, and not for the board of selectmen, for the board of health, board of health, police, yeah. police and fire. Right, if you had people setting up tents and camping overnight or something. Yeah. Well, that's a good one. Someplace in here. There's no transient, I think. I feel like it was there. Proposed hours. Events per year, attendees per event. Someplace in here, we should put wording about no, no transient or no. Number four, Jim, is the. No Overnight accommodation. Okay, no all right, good. We have it. Good. Okay. We won't well, be that's... having a. We won't be having a asparagus stock. Okay, there was somebody, a lawyer, I won't start naming names, a lawyer in Amherst had a, uh, one of his kids got married, and uh, he has a considerable amount of land associated with his house, and the uh, a lot of the guests uh, stayed in tents on the yard. That, that, that kind of makes sense, you know, they're they're probably going to have a few drinks. They sh wouldn't be driving, so they can sleep in the tents. Okay. I, th I thought that was a good idea for... It's on his private property, yeah. That, can... that, would, that would be covered under the exemption. Okay. You know, I mean, one-time private party event. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's going to happen once. It's not like it's going to be a returning recurring thing um 
I mean, I'm not going to oppose this, Jim, but I, uh, the groundswell is going to be, it's going to be aimed at the planning board. But are we going to get support from the police that are asking for it, the select board asking for it, uh, or does it seem like we're pulling something out of the air that, that addressing a problem that really is not affecting many people? I will find out for the police and fire. Okay. Yeah, you're right. If, if, if others aren't, in, when I had mentioned this to them, to the police and fire, they were, they were eager. So we'll see. You got to put them, you know, put them on the spot, say, are you going to speak in favor of this bylaw at the town meeting? If not, you're the ones requesting it more or less. Okay. Because there's no groundswell of public opinion against these things. Uh, so. Now it's a prevention. Okie doke. All right. And that was all I had on those two bylaws. Great. Um, so I think um, one of the things left over to do is I, I still have to meet with the building department to look at the common permits for um, the permitting guide. I'll share it with Tom's team, um, Tom and Dee Dee, um, to take a look. And if they want to add any additional items there, that probably makes sense to do that. Um, but after that, I don't think that there's any, we'll give it to the planning board one more time to take a look, but I don't think that there are any um, other issues with it. It was just confirming um, the permits for the building department for common permits. Um, so I think the last item, and you can stop me from talking about it, but it's the um, payment in lieu of. Um, I don't know where the board has landed um, based on your conversations with um, the developer who wanted to do the um, subdivision um, or and how to move forward with, with the language, revisiting it, looking at other examples again, um, and refining either the bylaw or um, adopting new regulations. We, you know, we got to address that one, that good, bringing it up, Ken. And at the last meeting, we left it with a couple of ideas. Um, one was, do we just want to make it a donation pertinent to what it actually costs to make affordable house, affordable unit? Or do we want to pick a number, reasonable number, if you want to call it reasonable, and make a donation and encourage the donation to the affordable housing trust fund, um, as opposed to trying to push people to build affordable units or convert into an affordable unit. And Bill and I were both of the opinion that we would want to see, encourage the donations into the affordable housing trust fund and use that to somehow Maybe best word is encourage developers to either maintain affordable housing or put some affordable housing in place someplace in town when they're building something. So how do the other board other board members feel? Well, I I like the idea of what Sunderland did. And they were under the gun. They didn't have their 10% threshold that we have. So uh, we're still in a fairly enviable position to have choices. Uh, they addressed a questionnaire in town and the most common group of people that were concerned about affordability and housing was over 60. So they made it 62 and over. Uh, that kind of takes away one of the arguments that traditionally is against uh, affordable housing in that it's gonna bring a lot of kids into the school. We're gonna to have to build a new school. We don't have room, blah, blah, blah. So that will take that away, but it does address the point. These people are the ones that need it the most. And 
they also, so they had a developer, it was a friendly 40B, developer came in, built 33 apartments. I thought it was 43, but I think it's 33. But, uh, and they had all the compliance regulatory issues and they did all the interviewing of the prospective people that were gonna live there. And if we ever do something like that, and there is a possibility with the Econolodge to do something like that, uh, then I would like to almost eliminate that whole inclusionary zoning affordability thing because we're only making it more expensive for middle income people. Uh, it's, it's, it's like a double-edged sword. I may be off base in thinking this way, but it's certainly gonna make housing more expensive and we're pretty expensive as a community anyways to, so, but how, how, so how do you, how do you, you I, I, I don't have a problem with what you said, Joe, but how do you make somebody put in a over 62 housing project? Okay, Econo Lodge comes before us and they want to make an SRO, single room occupancy, which is, uh, uh, Kind of people who are down on their luck, and a lot of them, a lot of them, they have the, the drug issues associated. I lived in a single room occupancy once, and I wasn't down on my luck. <laughs> yeah, let, let please let Joe talk. Okay, I'll go and uh, so that we have that ability because we're we're over the ten percent threshold. Sutherland had that ability to dictate what group of people they would like to see in town. Under what part of the bylaw do we have the authority to have to convince? Uh, how do we get my, my question, Joe, is how do we get them to go to over 60? It's going to have to go before a town meeting like Sunderland did and uh, they have to make the arrangements. Uh, so, but in the meantime, Joe, there is a special exemption under a, a 40B to uh, circumvent zoning. Yes. And, or, yes. So that's that could be used. You got a question? Yeah, Mark. I agree with Joe about the uh, the over sixty. You know, once you're on a once you're on a fixed income, affordable housing becomes important. And you know, whether it's a one room or single, I don't care. But I, I think I might disagree with Joe about not wanting to encourage younger families. I, I thought I read somewhere that our school system is actually, that our attendance is actually dropping. And if we don't get younger families in, you know, the state's going to tell us to consolidate with Hatfield or something again. You know, we might want to not just rule those out. I mean, I, I was in a church where we were kind of aging out. Is Hadley aging out? What is our demographic? Do we not want kids? I, well, all, all of Frank I, I'm not of that opinion. It's, it's, it's that, that trend that you mentioned is uh, not uh, only in Hadley. All of Franklin County is in that trend. I mean, they're losing population in every school. They, they have more kids in the Chicopee school district with one superintendent and Franklin County has 11 super superintendents. Well, will they have to consolidate? So it's, it's more than just Hadley, it's a regional issue. How do we address that from the school system? Uh, don't know. To, 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 a, to a quick answer your question, Mark, Hadley yeah. has a decent amount of students in the school system only because of school choice. Yeah. If it wasn't for school choice, we would have quite a few fewer students in school. One of the best basketball players on the teams from Northampton. So, um, but get, getting back to the, the existing bylaw, that is what applies to any developer currently. And yeah. we, we have to decide how it's do we decide what the developer is going to do or does the developer decide what he's going to do? We can give him a dollar number. The, the, we can give him 
a dollar number. And I don't think there's any way that you can charge anyone less per unit than was charged at East Street Commons. And we yes. get, we, we, you know, occasionally we get to the point, what or the question of what a unit is. Well, a unit is what the development has as a unit. Here at East Street Commons, it's one or two bedroom houses, okay? Up there in North Hadley, it's probably three or four bedroom houses. I don't know. So each yep. each development has a different def definition of unit. A, a, a unit is, is simply a unit. It could be one bedroom. It could be three or four. That's absolutely correct. Regarding... Yeah. Re re regarding the choice, a developer has three choices. All right. Build something on site. Yeah. Do something off site within the town of Hadley or donate to the fund. It's, and that is not what he, what he donates is not his choice. We have to tell him what he's going to do. We will tell him what the donation will be. Yeah. But it is his choice which of the three exactly. the developer tries exactly. to decide clarify. that they want to do. Yeah. I mean, when we originally generically brought up the potential contribution for the the trust, the lawyer, which I guess is his job, went off the handle. Yeah. Well, then build a house. <laughs> right? that, 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 that's, yeah. The, uh, it, it's, it's, this, is, this, this donation thing is not unlike TDR. No. Under TDR, the yeah. developer has two choices. Either he can negotiate with a farmer to, to save some land or yeah. put money into the TDR fund. Every single developer that has used TDR has used the donation to the fund because that was the easiest for them to go through. Sure. I would encourage any developer that's going to be coming before us to understand this bylaw and what the responsibilities are on it and not try to wiggle out of it at the end, okay? Yeah. Because there's no wiggle room. That, that's why we want to, you know, that is why you want to try to set a value. Yeah. Um, what is the opinion of the other board members as far as donation? Do we want to encourage the donation to the fund? I think or do we, we simply want to use actual building costs. We actually use actual building costs. The donation to the fund is going to be significant. If we can simply set a value for a unit, um, then it might be a lot more, you know, again, do we want to encourage or, or not? Well, no, I think you want to encourage it because it simplifies things. And you don't keep, have to keep going around and around and around right. on the same area. Right. Uh, you know, right. if, if in fact the contribution per quote un, unquote unit here at East Street Commons was twenty four thousand per unit, then the, the contribution up there would be one hundred forty four thousand dollars in dollars of four years ago. Yeah. So I mean, for for, for speaking numbers. I was looking, this is what I was thinking, and obviously it's just a thought, that if we want to encourage the donation to a, uh, the affordable fund, it would be $30,000 per unit. And let's say they needed, uh, let's say somebody put in nine units. Okay, every six units would be $30,000, and the ninth unit would be half of that, so you'd put in 45000 we should make it. We should make it a fractional amount. Somebody wants to put in, you know, yeah. uh, a fraction of 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 the, of the of the of the six. I agree. We may even want to change it. Somebody put the subdivision in one to five units that they would make a nominal donation based on those, so that they don't try to put in a five unit where they could normally get a six just to avoid putting right. in the thirty thousand. But again, to Joe Zagranik's point, all this is doing. Is increasing the cost of housing. <laughs> I do not disagree with it. I I yeah. agree with that. It is if if they don't build an affordable unit, it's making those that aren't affordable less affordable. Did you see that article? Somebody from Shelburne sent it down to the Gazette concerning affordable housing and that 
meeting we had a couple, two weeks ago. Did anybody see that? I did. You saw that. Yes. Just talking about exactly what we're talking about, how this bylaw just increases the cost of housing. And there should be an assessment on the other end. But I, in, in the, the, he's, there he's is actually talking about some, Falls. So. There's actually some, I believe there are some things before the legislature to put the equivalent of a CPA tax regarding affordable housing on deed transfers. Where it's going to yeah. go, is it going to go anywhere? I don't know. Have you heard anything on that, Ken? No, I think uh, the information. It's a, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one because you can't base it on the cost of what you sell it for because you may have a mortgage of, you may sell it for a million and you got a mortgage of 400. So do you base it on 600 or a million? That being said, if you've got $400,000 left on a mortgage for a million dollar house, three months before you sell it, you refinance it and bring the mortgage up to 900000 and your profit at that point in time is only a million. So we've got you got a lot of variables here. What you paid for it originally, the mortgage. You pay on the equity. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, All right. I, I think the mine only can endure what the seat can tolerate. So uh, I don't think we're going to resolve anything here. No, and I'm not, I'm not trying to resolve it, but nobody wants to answer my question. What's the question? Uh, at least Mike has given a thing. He's in favor of trying to encourage. What do Mark Dunn and Mr. Zagrodnik feel? My opinion uh, is I don't want to... You know, I've gone back and forth. I think I want to try to balance it as much as possible. I would love to have them build a unit, so I don't want to discourage that. So I'd, I'd like it to feel balanced so that based on their case, they can either build a unit or pay into our fund. But I do, I do like the idea that they don't just pay into the fund when they, when they hit a certain number. There has to be some graduated... You know, you can't just build under the number to, to avoid helping the affordable housing. Okay. Well, it's the bylaw we have, but it's a b bad bylaw for, as we've said, it, all it does is increase the cost of housing. Mm -hmm. Believe me, the developer isn't going to eat it. He's, he's got a return on his capital that he wants, and he's mm -hmm. going to pass it on to the poor okay. schmuck. Buying the house in Hadley. Right. And by the way, getting back to this potential fee on the sale of a house, it has to be, that has to be a statewide law. It can't be community by community by community. It has to be blanket. They're, yeah, they're they're looking they're looking to put it before the legislature. I believe it's either going to be statewide or countywide. I'm not sure. Yeah. But even that hasn't been anywhere. I mean, they're just, there's just talk about it. I don't think there's anything actually before them. But I'm not sure. I know Amherst was looking to, for a, what do they call, what do they call that? Uh, what do you go before, when you go before the legislature for something unique to your town? Uh -huh. How they did it when they, well, anyway, Amherst is looking to possibly do something like that for their town. Um, but I don't know where that stands either. My point is, if each community could decide to put that fee on the sale of the house, then that community would be taking on the onus of providing affordable housing to everybody. Okay. I wish we could do something like uh, something like the NFL's uh, luxury tax. If you're going to build and sell units above a certain price then you're gonna yeah. you're gonna give a percentage to our fund you know because if, if you're gonna build it above the affordability then just take a slice out of that and give it to the you, fund. I, I'm the Irving smiling because the New York Nets traded him to Dallas no state income tax down there okay <laughs> yeah. okay um Ken Next meeting. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, it depends on when the board would like to meet. I'm available 
I have my second, my first and third Tuesdays always free. So at the board's leisure, other than the second meeting in March. So next, the next meeting or the first meeting in uh, March. Um, so you're available first meeting in March? Yeah. Okay, I'll put you down for that one. Okay. And, and Mark, do not be afraid to join in on criticizing any member of the board. If you have a different opinion or you've seen things in other communities, please don't be hesitant to give your feedback because I think it's very valuable. Uh, thank, thank you for that. I think, you know, I think this conversation is not unique. This is what's I, happening I, <laughs> across the Commonwealth, um, especially when it comes to looking at inclusionary zoning bylaws, revisiting them. Um, and just because, you know, there is this housing crisis that the government, the, the state government has determined um, with regards to the availability of housing, you know, depending on the community, Obviously, um, there are differences. Um, but, yeah, yeah. So, I, I, what I will continue to do um, as you started to talk, and you know, I think this is a, a fascinating development with regards to 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 maybe look at your inclusionary zoning bylaw um, and possibly amending that to address um, you know, those that wouldn't necessarily meet or need to utilize that because they were developing under your threshold. So, you know, I think Mark had alluded to that, um, oh. you know, and I think that there are mechanisms and, and towns have looked at that, um, and amending from, you know, what currently was the threshold to allow for, um, or to require rather, um, the affordable unit. And, and, you know, I wish the state would look at how state policy caused the demand for housing to exceed what might naturally occur if so many transfer payments weren't, weren't taking place. Yeah. You want to live in Massachusetts because, you know, you can live, you can live here without signing a paycheck. Healthcare. Sure. Uh, you know, it's analogous to health care. I, I was on a legislative committee when I was in practice. 18% when I was aboard uh, of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts was on mass health Medicaid. Now it's 38% in the 10 years since I've been retired. And that's how much it's gone up. I mean, Mark. yeah, I'd like to share one more related yeah. thought. And that's, I, feel bad some days when I think about the fact that I got up at town meeting and spoke against Barry Roberts' uh, variance amendment to build outside the, the um, over 50 uh, overlay district. Because I liked his project, but I heard a lot of the neighbors, I wanted to speak on their behalf, they were like, you know, it was not going to be in their best interest. So I wonder, have we looked at, when's the last time we looked at, can we expand the uh, over 50, over 55 uh, overlay district? Are there other areas that we could make more opportunities? Because I thought I heard, I thought I heard someone say there isn't anywhere else to do it. Maybe it should be the whole town. Two years ago. Two years ago, uh, Mark, uh, there was a rezoning issue for something like that, and it failed. Then, you know, it, it's not in my backyard, one of the, you know, the NIMBY. That's what he was talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's the way it is. And uh, the Dion, the Dion property. Yeah. Well, the Dion property was going to be very, that was really packed, and it was going to really hit Middle Street with a lot of traffic with just one outlet. Well, that's not true. I live here, and you can, you can sit on your front porch. Uh, Mark, and there's no cars. There's no cars. Nobody leaves or comes. That's, yeah. That was a false argument, and I can attest to that because I live at East Street Commons. There's no traffic here. Maybe well, when they're built. But I wonder if after the state widens and puts more sidewalks, if there would be, you know, not elderly housing, but, you know, if projects along Route 9, Mike. I, I've heard that there's a potential. I could just finish my point, Mike. 
Okay, I know sorry. you have a lot to say. Yeah. Okay. There might be pockets where we could do something that might now be more accessible. Because right now, you wouldn't want to be putting over 50 on Route 9 because there's no sidewalks. They can't get anywhere safely if they don't have a car. So yeah, he uses the sidewalks. It's, well, there, now that we have some experience, for lack of a better term, with a senior housing project, to Mike's point, we know how much traffic really goes down that street. So somebody started saying, well, there's going to be too much traffic to the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. No, do a traffic count on the existing senior housing, and you'll see, and with 35 homes, you'll see that there's, you know, a couple of cars an hour. That's, that's nothing. <clears throat> but Mark... Oh. When before Barry Roberts started, uh, he had a focus group. A bunch of old, old geezers like myself got together. <laughs> what do you want to pay? Well, we want to pay two twenty-five, two fifty, and he he was ready for that one. And he puts us a picture of a house up there. Oh, we want a two-car garage, not a one-car garage. Okay, so we'll put a two-car garage in. The bedrooms are kind of small. We would like, uh, you know, two bigger bedrooms. Okay, we'll put a bedroom in two bedrooms in. Is there a cellar? No. We'll put a cellar in. Okay, we'll put a cellar in. You can put it on and on and granite countertops and all of a sudden you're up to 400,000. So what people like and what uh, they can afford, who knows? Uh, so Very interesting. Focus. I've heard there's some talk about a potential site off of Route 9. I won't mention it, but there is talk about it, but it would have to would have to change the zoning. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, okay. Okay, yeah. thank you, Ken. Thank Sorry you. to talk over you, Mark. <laughs> okay, Mike. Well, I wish we were in a... Somebody asked us when we're going to go to live meetings again. Never? Um, the Zoom meetings that the governor approved, the extension for Zoom meetings expires March 31st. Okay. I was on a meeting today with Mass Municipal Association, and they don't know what the legislature is going to do, but there was a tremendous amount of people on this meeting today from across the state of Massachusetts, and the vast majority of them loved Zoom meetings. They do not want to get rid of Zoom. No, if, if, if we end up over at the old library, we, we should definitely have the technology to, to do hybrid. Because I, when I do the uh, diversity committee, we do hybrids. So we have, you know, we can have a number of people zooming in. And with that, that owl camera mic, it actually really um, handles it pretty well. Yeah. And can we have oh. a big screen mark that flashes up all the blueprints and well, the, 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 the big screen up front is the, 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 the new library has a big, has a, has the selectmen have hybrid meetings and they are sometimes, if you don't have TV5, um, I would say it, monitoring and addressing it, it it's, it's, it, it's a tough Tough deal to manage with somebody from the planning board or from from from, uh -huh. from somebody on the board. Well, yeah. you know, people have to start using their expense accounts again. They come to Hadley, they stay at a hotel, they spend a little money at a restaurant. And that's good for everybody. So, well, that was good for business that Tom was able to be with us and then also be on site for his other meeting. So that was a good example yeah. for for Zoom. Yeah. I like Zoom meetings. And you don't have to like see them, my mask. But now that we've had them, I think they're the cats. I, I'll be honest. Yeah. I do not want to get rid of Zoom. Mm -hmm. Hybrid meetings? Well, maybe. Yeah. So, anyway. Is there any progress with the old library? Pardon? Is there any the progress? Library? Yeah. With us being getting space over there? I have heard nothing about the old library for anybody. Okay. I saw a building committee meeting briefly and somebody dropped the ball, you know, if you got to have somebody to, to encourage it. Hey, 
You got your money's worth tonight, Jim. Um, let's see. We do have two bills to pay. We have a uh, Gazette bill for legal advertising for the Verizon legal ad for $417.10. I would make a motion to pay it. I'll second. second. Okay. Who seconded? Mark? Mike seconded. I think Joe seconded. Mark made the motion. Joe. Okay. Uh, any discussion? If not, all in favor of paying the bill, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 4-0 with Mr. Dwyer absent. And we have a bill for $405.52 for legal advertising for the Emily, I think it's Ike, for her home occupation that'll be at, I believe, one of our meetings at our next meeting. I would make a motion to pay that as well. Second. Joe, second. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 401 again. And that's all I have. You have anything, Mr. Quinlan? No? Does your just, number one assistant? Just want to ask Ken if he wants to just email, we'll set up a time to get together. Great. Oh. Okay. Very good. Thank you, okay. everybody. Thank you. Okay. Um, I have nothing else. Anybody have anything else? Good night. Mo motion. You have something, Mike? No. Good night. Be oh, careful if you're driving to Joe's. It's just snow outside. Oh, not tonight. <laughs> yeah. Move with adjourn. A second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you.